I'm really going to attempt to get this all out in a way that makes sense, in a way that you can pick it up, you can receive it, it can minister to you, and you can meditate on it, right? Because this is a really powerful word. So um, bear with me because this video, you know, might be around 15 minutes. So bear with me because this is going to bless you and change your life. So last year in December, the Holy Ghost started to minister to me about the word loss um, and the spirit of loss, right? And the attack of loss. And God started to show me how that word had manifested itself in my life in different ways and relationships and um, even homelessness uh, and, you know, death that I had experienced, um, health, you know, all these different ways that I had lost something, right? Like I was, you know, just, it just, it was just mind blowing, right? It was just mind blowing. And so in ministering that word to me, God started to talk to me because I want to look up the word loss, right? And the opposite of loss is gain. Um, but the Holy Ghost minister to me, what we're doing is that we are releasing and we are renouncing loss and we are receiving ownership, right? Ownership. Okay. So I have a, a very dear friend that is um, her son's life, right? He's five years old, is being attacked and it's been attacked, right? And so I, as I was praying for her last night, early this morning, God started to talk to me about loss again, right? And how in her own life, you know, because me and her both have been through seasons of homelessness together. Her ex-husband, you know, passed away. You know, every time she she moves somewhere, something happens and she's just always in a state of homelessness, right? Relationships, all kinds of stuff. So God is like, here goes that attack again of loss. And yesterday, before this even happened, God was talking to me very heavily about the word ownership, right? Very heavily about it. And so I was asking God to bring it all home for me, right? And so this morning, as I was spending time with God and and just thinking about where we are as a church, right? Where we are in as a family, right? God started to talk to me once again about about that it has to be what you say. And God started to talk to me again about ownership, right? And this is what the Holy Ghost ministered to me. The Holy Ghost ministered to me, right? I'm not going to let you have it and you lose it, right? I'm not going to let you have it and you you forfeit the game, uh, whether that's through, you know. And so, okay, I'm trying to make this make sense for you so you guys can really get the meat of what the Holy Ghost is saying here. So help me, Holy Ghost. Because you understand that that's what happened in Genesis, right? That's what happened with Adam and Eve, right? God said, let us make man. Well, God said, let us make male and female, right? In our image, right? And God said, let them have dominion, right? Let them, right? So that's, that's what God did. That's in the book of Genesis, right? Where God, where God, um, and let me just try to go real quick and read a little bit just so we can put some word behind it because the Holy Ghost is really going to show up when we put word behind it, right? So, okay, Genesis 1 and 26. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over, right? And then that's what God said. Okay, so God said we were going to be fruitful. We were going to increase. We were going to rule over everything, right? And then here comes Adam and Eve, right? No shade, but they fumbled the ball. They fumbled the ball, right? And now the the natural authority that God had given us, right? Now here comes the enemy who deceived them. So now by forfeit, now he is God of this world. Now he is God of this world. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. And so now it takes flesh. It takes flesh to come back and redeem back to us what God gave to us in the first place. I'm telling, I'm teaching y'all Bible. I'm teaching y'all about, y'all already know this. Y'all already know that, that Jesus calls Satan, the God of this world. Y'all already know Jesus had to come in flesh and bone and redeem us and give us back authority. Right. And we struggle with that authority, right? Cause the devil want us to play this game where you don't really have it. But Luke 10 and 18 and 19, Jesus says, Satan fell like heaven, right? So he's, he, he, he fell. So he's not in heaven anymore. Jesus said, but I give you authority 
to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the devil. So the devil don't have no authority, right? But he got power. But we have authority over that power. Am I helping anybody right now? So this is the same struggle that the children of Israel had, right? They had the same struggle with ownership, right? So in the book of Exodus, when God comes and tells Moses the whole plan for the children of Israel, throughout the entire process, they cannot own it. They cannot own it. They they just, they keep fumbling the ball. They fumble the ball leaving out of Egypt. They fumble the ball in the wilderness. They fumble the ball when they actually get in the land, right? When they get in the land and they say, we can't do it. We're too weak. We're too ineffective. This city is too strong and we can't do it. And that's, that's what we think sometimes when we are facing situations in our lives, we can't do it. I've been struggling with this addiction too long. I've been struggling in this relationship too long. I've been struggling in this, this situation too long. I can't do it. And this is the first time we hear God say directly out of his mouth, I, listen, I'm over them and I'm going to send a plague and I'm going to kill them all, right? And Moses, Moses, I, I've been teaching you all this like Jesus, right? Moses is, is the first deliverer we see even before Jesus. And Moses is like, no, 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 we can't kill them because then word will reach Egypt, right? And they'll think that you failed them. So God said, okay, you're right. So this generation though, I'll just wipe out this whole generation and start over and start over, right? So this is what God is saying. This is what God is saying. This is what ministered to my heart, right? God is saying, you, you want the marriage, you want the money, you want all this stuff, right? But I'm not going to let you possess that thing until I really know that you, you are owning, that you have mastered, mastered, that's the word, mastered ownership, right? Until you really mastered, I got this thing. And that is why Jesus said in Mark 11, believe you have received and you have it. Receiving is ownership. Receiving is ownership. Receiving is knowing in your spirit. It says good. We are spirit beings, right? And God got to trust us that we own it in our spirit before he hands it to us naturally. He's a spirit. God is a spirit. God is a spirit. Are you hearing me? God is a sp God has to know. Oh my God, help me Jesus, right? Because even with the seed, even when we plant a seed, that seed is not a banana. That seed, when we plant, when we plant an apple seed, it's not an apple, but we know, we know it's going to produce an apple. We know it's going to go in the ground. It's going to do what it needs to do. And it's going to produce an apple, right? Right. So listen, because that apple is going to produce, that fruit is going to produce after its own kind, right? We are spirits. God said, let us make mankind in our own image, right? The God is a spirit first and foremost. So he's not, listen, listen, I'm, I'm really trying to help y'all. And I'm really, y'all know how I get when I get passionate and I get really, you know, it, it just starts. So, so what I'm telling you, right, is that, that, that thing, you have to receive it on the inside. You have to own it on the inside. You have to own it. You have to own it. In Daniel three, when King Nebuchadnezzar is about to throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire, they say something that unless you are really, uh, unless you really, really, really listening, you might miss it, right? So they tell King Nebuchadnezzar, listen, our God can save us. He's mighty enough to save us. And if he doesn't save us, we're still not going to worship your idols, well, but if he doesn't save you, you can't worship the idols because you'll be dead, right? Go read it. They say, they say something very interesting. They say, first of all, our God is mighty enough to save us. And if he doesn't save us, we're not going to worship your idols. But if he doesn't save you, you can't worship my idols because you'll be dead. So it's, it's the same, it's the same thing that Jesus says to Simon Peter in Luke 22 and 31. He says, Simon Peter, Satan has asked, Satan has demanded to sift you all like wheat, but I've prayed for you, right? I've prayed for you that, that, uh, I've prayed for you and I've prayed for your faith so that when you come back, you can strengthen your brothers. So there's almost a guarantee that you're going to come out of this. There's almost a guarantee that you're going to come out of this, right? So I said all that to say that I want you guys to hear with your, with your ears 
what I'm saying, right, about ownership, right, and about making sure that you really, really got this thing, right? You really, because, because mind you, we've been talking about the children of Israel relentlessly, right? And all the way into the promised land, they're still fumbling the ball. They're still fumbling the ball. But guess who never fumbles the ball, right? which is why he finally possesses it for us. We know who that is. We know that king from day one that knew who God was. That is why this month has been about movement. That's why this month has been about identity, right? Because listen, that is going to solidify our ownership. That is going to solidify our ownership, right? You want, you want that marriage and you don't even know how to receive and own being a wife and being a helpmate. You really like, like, listen, you are worth somebody effort. You are worth somebody's time. You are worth somebody waiting on you and respecting you and not pressuring you for sex. You are worth that. But do you own it? Do you own it? Do you own that truth about yourself? Do you own that truth about, again, who, when Jesus says, who do they say that I am? I know that, listen, I believe, I believe the sacrifice that Jesus made for me for me. So if I believe that this man in the form of flesh and blood did all of that for me, why then do I take the posture of begging and and pleading for health and, 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 and anything that I'm believing for? So you went through this brutal bloodbath of a crucifixion. You did that for me, right? And now I have to sit here and I have to beg you to not be in the condition that I'm in. You don't really own who I am then. You don't really own who I am. You don't really own who you are. You don't really own that you that, that me and you are co-heirs in this, right? Jesus said in the book of John, no longer am I going to be considered master and you slave. Now I'm calling you friend because I laid down my life for you. Do you own that truth? Do you own that truth? Because listen, If you do, your life is going to have to look a certain way. It's going to have to look a certain way. It just is. That seed is going to have to produce fruit. If you're looking at your life and it is not looking like what you say you receive, do you really own it? Do you really own it? Receiving is ownership. Receiving, and it's an inside job. It's an inside job. It's an inside job. Listen, right? Even for me, God is saying, I'm not letting you walk into that thing until I can really see in your spirit that you own that thing, that you have been sitting in the presence and the atmosphere of ownership, that you have been saying that, that, that saying it's mine, it's mine. I got it. It's like a song in your spirit that you can hear all day long right? That when anything that contradicts what I said, listen, no sickness, no lack, no compromise, no forfeit, no sabotage, no defeat, no. So I just wanted to get this word out and I just wanted to tell you guys that in the midst of this famine that is going on, right? God has good for us. And that's how God works. That's how God works. Go read about the four lepers at the gate in Samaria. I think that's in second Kings, right? And how in the midst of the famine, the prophet Elisha, here goes your prophet, Romania, having good news, right? And somebody was like, nah, that'll never happen, right? I'm telling you in the midst of this famine, right? God, God is trying to talk to us about possession. God is trying to talk to us about the harvest, right? In the midst of this chaos in the world, God is talking to us about something different. So that's all I wanted to say. I pray that this word blesses you. Um, I pray that you really understand and you pick up what I'm talking about and that you really own your truth because that's going to matter, right? Because I'm telling you, if you have not received it, If you don't own it, your life is not going to show it. So stop going to God, begging God to do it and own that he's already done it. Receive it. Receive how amazing God is and how much he loves you and what he has already done for you. Receive it. I own it. I own it. 
I, I'm not negotiating with the enemy on whether or not God has this or that for me. I'm not negotiating with these circumstances. I'm not negotiating with this pain. Then I tell you, it's not an option for me to fight against this pain. All right. I love you guys. Be blessed.